Hello there to you. Let's do some questions having to do with this perfectly competitive firm operating in the short run and think about what's going to happen as it goes, as the market adjusts to its long run. So just to answer some questions here that go with this particular graph. So here we have marginal cost that represents the additional cost of producing additional units. Average variable cost, so those are the costs that change divided by the quantity. And then average total cost, which is all the costs divided by the quantity. Okay. So first uh, question here in the short run, what is the fixed cost for this firm? Explain your answer fully. Okay, so we know what the average total cost is and the average variable cost. So you can just pick one quantity, either 30, 50, or 70, and then um, find out what the average total cost is for that quantity and the average variable cost for that quantity. Multiply that by the quantity. It de-averages um, the the uh, average cost, and then that gives you your total cost. Okay, so or, your, or in this case, your total fixed cost. So it's probably easiest to look at this one right here. So um, when average total cost, or sorry, when we produce 70 units, average total cost is nine. So I'm just going to write that right there. Average variable cost is, is five. So that means, somehow there's a C missing there. Um, that means that I don't know what average fixed cost is. Well, you, you do know what it is. But, uh, so average fixed cost is four. And then we're going to look at how many units uh, we're talking about there. We're talking about 70. So you just multiply 70 times. Well, and here's why. Average fixed cost equals the total fixed cost divided by a quantity. So in this case, it's 70. So the setup here for this part, in case you want to show all your work, is 4 equals FC over 70. Okay, so this is 280 is the fixed cost. So that's the answer to the first one. Okay, so you'd want to give a short explanation there. Find the break-even price and the shutdown price. Okay, so the break-even price. So the thing about perfectly competitive markets like this one is that price is always going to equal marginal revenue. And the firm is always going to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's called profit maximization. Right? So we, essentially, we need the price to uh, match up with whatever the break-even situation is. So that would be the break-even price. I need the price to be at least $8. So that's 8 right there. Break-even price is when price equals the average total cost minimum. Okay, And that is also the spot where marginal cost intersects average total cost. Okay, uh, And then the shutdown price, this is where uh, the price equals average variable cost minimum. And there are a variety of reasons for why that's the case. You don't need to go into those right here, but that's going to be right there. The minimum of average total cost is three. So that's the answer there. Should the firm operate if market price was equal to two? And the answer is no, because we're any, any price that's below three is going to be below the shutdown price, and we're better off to shut down in the short run. Okay, If the price is between 3 and 8, we can produce in the short run, and we'll lose less money than if we shut down. Okay, uh, So that's why it's, it's below, the answer to number 3, it's below average variable cost minimum. Suppose the market price is $12 a unit, so now we're way up here. And we're coming on over here. So now the price is above average total cost, so we're earning a profit. Okay. Uh, does the firm maximize its profit by earning or by producing 50 units? No, it should produce 70 units. We we want to come to where this condition holds true. Okay. And that is not true when it, when we're producing 50, uh, we can earn more profit if we continue to produce. Okay. So should the firm increase or decrease, the firm should increase. Uh, they should produce 70. 70 is where MR equals MC. 
which quantity maximizes the firm's profit given the market price? Well, it's 70. Right? It's kind of what we just kind of what we just said. Uh, given the break-even price, do you think that the firm is earning a positive or negative price from the? Okay, so we know that they're earning uh, positive profits. In fact, we we actually know how much profit they're earning. So they're going to earn three dollars per unit that they sell. Because if you follow this down to where it hits average total cost, the average total cost of producing 70 units is 9, but we're going to sell them for 12. So we're going to make $3 per unit. So we can multiply 3 times 70. That's the area of this big rectangle here. Um, and so that would be 3 times 70, which would be 210. Calculate the profit or loss earned by the firm. Well, um, that was what we just we just did. It's a positive profit, and it would be uh, if you wanted to write out the, the formula here. Um, profit as pi will be the price minus average total cost times quantity. You can also do this a little bit longer. You can calculate the total revenue. And subtract the total cost. So, so in that case, you would multiply 12 times 70. That's your total revenue, and then 9 times 70. That's your total cost. You'll get the same answer. You're getting it at 210 either way. What do you think will happen in the market in the long run? Well, if firms are earning a profit because this firm is not protected by high barriers to entry, in other words, it's relatively easy to, for new firms to enter the market. New firms will enter the market. So this is the case. When the price is above the average total cost, new firms are going to show up because they think they can make a profit. Well, that's going to increase the supply, and uh, the price in the market is going to fall. And in the long run, equilibrium is going to have to happen when the price equals average total cost, which equals ab which I'm sorry equals marginal cost. Uh, which also equals average revenue, which is also equal to marginal revenue. So all of those things are going to equal each other in the long run. So in the long run, we like to say that the perfect competitors earn no positive economic profits.